Hello, my name is John Gross. I'm a bone and soft tissue pathologist at Johns Hopkins University. Welcome to case number nine. Here we have a young adult with a plain film radiograph showing a neoplasm of the left thigh. This uh, radiograph, we have these radio densities uh, growing what appears to be on the surface of this long bone here with these uh, perpendicular arrays uh, radiating out uh, into the soft tissues, both laterally and medially um, in this an uh, anterior posterior view. And if you look really carefully, um, you can see these uh, perpendicular uh, lines here, so-called hair on end pattern, uh, which is a periosteal reaction. Um, it's quite ill-defined. One might think about uh, a reactive or um, perhaps a post-traumatic uh, problem such as myositis ossificans. However, it's quite large, quite ill-defined, and it's very concerning for an osteosarcoma. Um, so it, in order to better define this ra these radio densities, uh, a CT scan was performed. And here we have uh, in the bone window on the left, a coronal and on the right, a sagittal uh, section. And again, we have this ill-defined bone forming tumor that arises on the surface of the bone. Uh, and you can see here on the left, um, it quite large going out into the soft tissues. Um, and uh, on the right, uh, anterior and posteriorly, um, this tumor was encircling this long bone. And the uh, tumor, again, is quite concerning for a uh, osteosarcoma. So tissue was obtained. And here we have a chondroosseous neoplasm with peripheral condensation. Here are the, uh, the central cartilaginous areas uh, converge uh, along the edges, uh, along the periphery to ossify. Uh, the cells are um, haphazardly growing um, and have um, various areas of osteoid production. Um, now at higher power, uh, again, we have uh, areas of cartilage, these little nodules here with the purple matrix uh, mineralization pattern of osteoid. Cells are haphazardly growing with this pink osteoid matrix, uh, and this is a chondroblastic osteosarcoma. Um, it, various areas show uh, more cartilaginous differentiation, and perhaps some of the viewers were thinking about a high-grade uh, chondrosarcoma. Um, High-grade grade three of chondrosarcomas are quite rare, and uh, are generally not um, this anaplastic, this cellular, uh, and of course would not be producing bone. Um, and finally, other areas of this tumor were more uh, spindle cell sarcoma appearing uh, and mitotically active. Uh, this tumor underwent neoadjuvant chemotherapy. And again, we see this surface-based uh, chondroblastic uh, neoplasm, which is a peri, P-E-R-I, peri osteosarcoma. This um, cut section here of the gross uh, shows how this mass, um, and, which is similar to the radiographs, is quite large and is uh, arising on the surface of the bone and does not involve the um, central portion um, of the medullary cavity. So we have a periosteal osteosarcoma, which is an intermediate grade osteosarcoma. Um, and it's one of the variants of osteosarcoma, which uh, I'd like to very briefly uh, review here. So the most common variant of osteosarcoma is conventional osteosarcoma uh, and this osteoblastic type. Here on the left is a um, intermediate to high power view showing these uh, pleomorphic and anaplastic cells that are directly producing mineralized osteoid, uh, which is the definition that we need for an osteosarcoma. And on the, the right, it, at an even higher power, uh, again, we have these pleomorphic cells that are directly producing and um, uh, mineralizing um, 
bone matrix, um, a osteosarcoma. It's quite uh, lace-like uh, and fine uh, bone production. So this is an osteoblastic osteosarcoma, which is the most common subtype of conventional high-grade osteosarcoma. Here's a collage showing some of the other um, types. Uh, the top left with a, an example of fibroblastic osteosarcoma, which is a uh, spindle cell um, sarcoma, which is um, variably bland here, a little bit of cytologic atypia. And then there are some um, variable spicules of uh, neoplastic bone, not rimmed by osteoblast here, again, directly produced by this bone, uh, by this sarcoma cells. The top right is an example of telangic catech osteosarcoma, uh, which is shown here with these blood-filled cystic spaces. The uh, tumor has uh, a various um, cyst-like quality, variably solid. There may not be a whole lot of osteoid um, in this tumor, uh, but the radiographs um, may be helpful to review that are gonna be uh, generally more aggressive. Uh, than a aneurysma bone cyst, which would be the differential diagnosis because this tumor may have fluid fluid levels and other um, um, radiographic features um, that may make one consider an aneurysma bone cyst. However, this is an aggressive high-grade sarcoma. Um, in the bottom left is an example of uh, chondroblastic osteosarcoma. Again, we have a uh, nodule of cartilage there with a little bit of osteoid formation. And in the bottom right, uh, an example of giant cell rich osteosarcoma. So these pleomorphic tumor cells with osteoid production and then these uh, big, large multinucleated giant cells. Uh, here's a view of small cell osteosarcoma on the left. These primitive cells uh, directly producing mineralized osteoid here that you can see at, at low power, these tiny little purple um, spicules. And on the right at a higher power, you can actually see that these, these cells are uh, producing this mineralized osteoid. Um, again, the definition of osteosarcoma. And the final variant that we'll discuss is chondroblastoma-like osteosarcoma. And on the far left, you see this mineralized osteoid um, pattern here, but an otherwise fairly pink tumor, um, variably epithelioid. And uh, on the far right, you can see how this stuff is quite mineralized. Um, this pink collagen matrix does have mineralization and uh, with the purple over there and is variably mitotically active. However, it does uh, resemble chondroblastoma with some of these cells that are even reniform and kidney bean shaped. Uh, so that's a very rare osteosarcoma subtype. It's certainly, of course, more aggressive than a chondroblastoma. So osteosarcoma is the most common non-hematopoietic primary bone tumor with a bimodal distribution and young patients younger than 20, as well as older patients uh, older than 60. Uh, generally occurs in the metaphysis of long bones often around the knee, but may affect any bone. Uh, radiographically, osteosarcoma is typically an ill-defined, mixed lytic and blastic uh, tumor. There may see a Codman's triangle, which is when the periosteum is elevated by the advancing tumor front and leaves behind a um, focus of um, uh, reactive periosteal uh, bone. Uh, Osteosarcoma is rapidly growing, uh, which is different than uh, conventional chondrosarcoma, which is a more slowly growing tumor. Um, osteosarcoma is defined by the production of malignant osteoid. It's often lace-like. It lacks osteoblastic rimming. Osteosarcomas are often invasive and have permeative growth. Uh, almost all types of osteosarcoma uh, are subject to preoperative chemotherapy. There's a couple of subtypes that do not uh, have, or do not, are not recommended to have uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy. And we'll discuss those at late, on later videos. The lung is the most common site of metastatic disease. And the prognosis of osteosarcoma is quite variable uh, with conventional osteosarcomas having 50 to 80% survival. Um, however, the, the low-grade osteosarcoma variants um, have a relatively good prognosis at more than 90% survival. Um, so our patient here 
uh, had a diagnosis of periosteoosteosarcoma, which is an intermediate grade, grade two of three, chondroblastic osteosarcoma or chondroblastic bone forming sarcoma, which arises on the surface uh, of the bone, it typically is underneath the periosteum. Uh, it's quite rare, less than 2% of all osteosarcomas. Um, half of the cases, the tumor will encircle the long bone, uh, most commonly in the diaphysis of the femur or tibia, uh, similar to our patient. Um, you may see a uh, periosteal reaction with these perpendicular uh, lines that we were able to see radiographically, the so-called hair on end pattern. Um, and periosteal osteosarcoma will lack MDM2 or CDK4 amplification, uh, whereas it's the differential diagnosis of another surface-based osteosarcoma, which is PAR, P-A-R, PAR osteal osteosarcoma, would have MDM2 and CDK4 uh, amplification. Um, and uh, because periosteal osteosarcoma is not a conventional chondrosarcoma, periosteal osteosarcoma does not have IDH mutations. Thank you.